This is a 1940s bordering machine. This is my favorite machine in the engine turning shop. And right now we're going to work on the top of a 1940s compact with an Art Deco design. They call this a bordering machine because you can find a lot of these machines in watch factories. They would put the four sides of the border around the glass on a lot of men's wrist watches. Another thing it was really good for is putting small lines on things like men's money clips. Uh, something like this, a guy would buy thousands of them for 29 39 cents. Put a lot of engine turning on them, really easy to do, really fast, and then sell them to a wholesaler for maybe a dollar or two. So it's a really easy machine to learn. It's, a, it's basically a straight line machine. So let's just take a quick look at a project I did the other day. Just using straight lines, you can do an off-center sunray. And you could do this project in about 15 minutes. Uh, but you'll notice one thing on this particular easy sunray is when you put too many lines in one sh small area, you'll get some distortion. And there's a way of covering up that distortion. And that is the number one idea that Carl Fabergé had was to put a charm in the middle of it. This particular cigarette case he has on the front of this book is all done with nothing but straight lines and where you see this piece right here he has skipped four lines and then continued him further up continued him further up so this is just the parent metal left behind so a beautiful project using just straight lines also when Carl liked an idea he'd do it in a lot of different variations and this is one of them it's just a drop dead gorgeous piece but where's the mistake in the middle and then he would cover it up so let's just take a quick look at what we're doing with this compact this is a very easy machine to run it'll do 180 lines and you can see it's very fast and very quick and I've been at this for almost 20 minutes but you can tell we're really moving it only takes a few seconds to put a line on there and I'm almost finished and uh, you can skip every other line that looks nice there's a lot of ways you can run this project and have it look good there's really no mistake in the whole project uh, the only thing we're doing that one might call a mistake is the distortion in the middle which you really can't help get when you're putting a hundred plus lines in any project here we go right it right about there one more time and we're done now let's take a quick peek at what this other sides of the machines look like and uh, that'll be it for the bordering machine this is a new Hermes chuck for a pantograph and I like it because it's inexpensive I think I paid a hundred dollars for it but it moves in two different directions and you can put any type of aluminum jaws in there to hold just about anything so it's a, a, a real nice adaptation to this machine you'll also notice there's a detent here with four marks on it and that's where all your patterns are designed from so uh, it's just a worm gear and it's very inexpensively made right in here as opposed to uh, a straight line machine. Now, if you look at the base of the machine right here and up here with the weights in the middle, uh, you'll notice it is very much a small straight line machine, but it takes no pattern bars. Uh, this is a spring-loaded uh, stop here. You use, you use this to set up the machine, and that's what we've done right now. I have this particular cutter on true center line of the machine and also when you're doing sun rays when you find true center of the machine you have to set a stop so every time this thing goes around and every time you come back you always go to the center line of your machine and the center line of your part 
So it's very easy to set two stops to set this particular job up. Only takes about 10 minutes. Now, it's a nice cross slide here. Excuse me, I said cross slide. It's interchangeable with the verbiage of slide rest, but this is actually a slide rest, and it is from the 40s. You can tell it's not cast like a lot of the ones we see in the older machines. This is steel, this is steel, and this is cast. But it's a nice nonetheless, and it works very well. But you can just tell by the way it looks. It's not cast, and it has that certain 1940s, 1950s look. Another thing you'll notice about the machine, it's a very small footprint on this machine. It doesn't take up more than, let's say, two and a half by two and a half feet in a shop, similar to a Kinlock. But one thing I did notice about this machine is ergonomically, the hand crank was in the wrong place. They had the hand crank screwed to the side of the machine, which is a really, really bad spot. Where it is right now is perfect. It's out of your way and uh, it's away from the machine so you can crank and not be in the way. When it's right here, it hits your left knee, which is uh, just a terrible place to, to mount it. Uh, there's not a lot of these machines around. They're not very valuable. Uh, I did only add one piece of tooling to it, and that is a center. The center is 7 8 It goes in the center of the spindle, and then I can find center very quickly with my diamond or my cutter, and then pull this out when it's in its up position and then mount my piece so I know everything's perfect and right on and you're not looking for it. Well that's about it for the bordering machine. It's an easy machine to learn. There's not an easier machine in an engine turning shop to run that's uh, as easy to learn as this. It's very easy and if you take some ideas out of the Carl Fabergé book you'll have a lot of fun with a machine like this. So thanks, and come back to the Rose Engine Shop.